I haven't spoken to Salman in five years. Um, I would not be interested in watching any of Salman's films. The first time I was sexually abused in Pakistan when I was five years old, um, uh, you know, I told, there were three incidents in the servant quarters and I told my mom and dad, and then of course actions were taken. But what my parents told me is that, um, beta ye kisi ko batana. This is Ankita, you are tuned into peepingmoon.com and today we bring to you someone who you last saw maybe decades before but right now she has many other stories to tell, some more kissas and kahanis to revisit from her life and what exactly are we bringing back is a way full of nostalgia with Somi Ali. Hi Somi, how are you? I'm very well, thank you for having me, I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so me first things first, I mean, um, in the last couple of weeks, you've all you've been all over the news, everyone has been talking about you. W what should I take this as? A are you getting to come back to Bollywood? Or how did it suddenly happen? Like when I open a newspaper, I see you almost every second day. What's what's going on? I gave literally one interview and it went viral and it got picked up by a gazillion publications. And I was like, oh my God, I just spoke to one journalist. I guess that's how it works, the internet. So uh, yeah, that's what happened. I was like, oh my God, my brother was like, what is going on? Uh, you're like everywhere. And I was like, yeah, I had not spoken for 20 years and then I speak and all of a sudden it's like everywhere. But do you realize, Sumi, that everyone is thinking that it's, it's more like Sumi wants to come back to Bollywood. It looks like a big Bollywood uh, detour for you. Is it so? No, no, not, not on the contrary, not at all. I just wanted to raise awareness about No More Tears because they asked, you know, it's like, where is she now kind of segment. Um, so they were just like, I said, listen, I left India in 99 December. And ever since then, you know, I dropped out in ninth grade when I moved to India at the age of 16. So I had to, from 99 December to 2006, I worked on my, from ninth grade to finishing my high school, then I did my bachelor's in psychology, then I did my master's in broadcast journalism. Um, so I drowned myself in education and then I started my, my nonprofit, No More Tears. So it was the interview was solely about talking about No More Tears because I wanted people to know what No More Tears does, more so because we rescue victims that are brought here from India and Pakistan and the Middle East. Um, so the, so the emphasis was about that, but then they wanted a backstory. Why did you come to India? And I'm an open book. I have nothing to hide. Everyone, the whole world knows why I went to India at the age of 16. So, but that one interview just went everywhere and people are like, she's trying to make a comeback. And I'm like, no, I have no interest. I'm, I'm a human rights activist. I, I run a charity. I, there's no way I'm, I, I can't. I want to come back and, and eat uh, pao bhaji at Ship Sagar. I heard it's still there. That's what I miss a lot. Um, but Modi ji, please give me a visa because I have a dual citizenship, Pakistani and American. Every time I apply for a visa, I get rejected just because I was born there. And I'm so mad at Lord Mountbatten to this day for doing the split so haphazardly. We should have never been split up. It's one culture, one food. It, we grew up in Hindi films in Pakistan. We're the same people. There was no Pakistan before. It before like it was just we were all Indian. So I'm so mad that that split happened to this day. But but so many do you realize that with sudden uh, arc lights on you and just one interview could do this? Do you understand that if you really decide to make that kind of move, how it will be? Like are you even? even a bit tempted that Bollywood could be waiting for you with open arms. Okay, so let me be very candid with you. I, I myself am shocked and baffled as to how I did 10 films from Salman to Sanjay to Saif to Chunky to Mitunda to Govinda, uh, who else? Omji, late Om, Om Puriji. Um, I just, I, I, I send them my hardest, my hardiest apologies for having to deal with me as an actor. And especially Mitunda, I did four films with him. He was so patient. Um, Sunil, I'm so sorry. I was the worst dancer. 
and and all of these people I don't, I still, I'm baffled how, and all of my producers and directors, please accept my forgiveness. <laughs> but, but it was just, it, it was, it was, I cannot believe, because I had no interest in acting. I had no, I never went for dance rehearsals. Saroj, Saroji used to be like so mad at me all the time. I'm amazed that I was so happy to work with Saroj Khan. Um, you know, Master G was amazing. But, um, but I had zero unda interest in acting, zero. I never went for rehearsals. I never rehearsed my dialogues. Sunil used to yell at me, you need to go to your dance rehearsals. The most patient person with me was Mitunda. I remember there was one dance sequence, which again, I never went for the rehearsals. And it was uh, a film called, um, I think it was called Yar Gadar. And it was a, a song called Tum Hi Tum Ho Meri Zindagi. And uh, so it was my turn. So Matinda said, Acha main sone ja <laughs> It was my turn to do the shot. So he said, main sone ja So me, jab tumara ho jai, to mujhe utha dena. Ke to main ka, thik hai, dada, ap so jaiye. <laughs> Karke, to uske pata nahi kitne retake hoi. But I sucked as a dancer. I sucked as an actor because I had no inclination and no motivation. I didn't go there to act. I went there to pursue a stupid, ridiculous, preposterous crush at the age of 16, a girl in Florida watches a movie, has a dream that night that she has to go get up in the morning and move to India and marry this random person who she'd never met, um, mind you, doesn't know from anywhere. So I, I, it's, it's very serendipitous to, to think about it, that how this actually happened um, so the next morning I wake up and I'm like looking for a suitcase and my mom is like, Kya kar rahi And I'm like, Mommy, mujhe India jana hai? Salman Khan se shadi karne. <laughs> she said, Tum pagal to nahi ho gai or Salman Khan koon hai? Because mom knew Amitabh Bachchan for being Bobby Zinat Aman. And I said, he's a new actor. And I had a dream last night that I have to go marry him. And she was like, Kamre mein jao aur nikalna nahi jab tak mein bolu nahi tumko pagal ho gai ho. So then I called dad. So I'm a daddy's girl. So I called dad and I said, Dad, I want to come to Pakistan because before the, uh, to, you know, go to Pakistan and then go to India because prior to the partition, a lot of our family members stayed back in India. So I totally conned my dad. I said, Dad, I want to see Taj Mahal. I want to see, I hate living in America. I miss you. I miss you part was true. Um, and I want to go to Bombay and I want to meet our relatives. And then uh, my dad was like, Tika, beta, my ticket, hai, jaun, tum aja. So I told mom, ha ha, I won. <laughs> so, so basically, uh, so of course I, I begged my mom, don't tell dad about Salman because he will like literally kill me. Um, and then basically I flew from, for, at the age of 16 from Florida to Pakistan first and then we went to India. And the irony of it all is I still haven't seen Taj Mahal. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's the best so when you realize that the stories you have like even in this brief four five minutes whatever you have told me could easily make for a nice book read or maybe a film it's, it's like I'm, a runaway at the sure. I'm working on my autobiography but I want what I want to ultimately do is I want to do a series I want to start from from the five-year-old girl in Pakistan who was a victim of sexual abuse in the house by the house help um and then again at nine and then I want to talk about being a rape survivor and also a domestic violence survivor. So I wanna, I wanna make a series, but I'm right now working on my autobiography. I've had a bizarre journey. Every country has several chapters. I'll tell you that, starting from Pakistan. So me, when, you, uh, when you are brave enough to come out and talk about such incidents, and you know that you, you can't part ways with the fact that you have been a celebrity and people recognize you and your name and the impact yours, you coming out and telling, a true incident of this sorts would make. Uh, do you think it's the right time for you? That's how you thought about writing the book that, you know, you can become voice to so many people out there with, with you also going through such, I would say such horrifying incidents. Uh, wh what, what took you all this while to come out or was it you were all this while there it just took it now for everyone else to notice? So I'll be, I'll be completely honest with you. It took me a long time to talk about this. So, so when the first time I was sexually abused in Pakistan, when I was five years old, um, uh, you know, I told, there were three incidents in the servant quarters and I told my mom and dad, and then of course actions were taken. 
But what my parents told me is that, um, beta ye kisi ko batana nahi, ki ye tumai saath hua hai. So, you know, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, I lived with that for years. I thought, did I do something wrong? Why was I told by my parents? But my parents were, you know, Pakistan, India, our culture is very image-based. So they were protecting me, but I didn't understand it because I was only five years old. Then again, there was an incident at nine. And then again, I was raped at 14. And, you know, so three years ago, literally three years ago, I started speaking out. Even though I was running this nonprofit for 14 years, um, you know, helping rescuing victims of human trafficking, domestic violence, rape, child, child, you know, children that are sexually and physically abused. I found myself uh, hypocritical for not being able to uh, speak up. But then I, I took that back and I said, no, I'm not being a hypocrite. I'm just, I'm just not ready because it takes, you know, even when I write my book, when I work on my autobiography, when I go in that dark moment of going into that servant quarter, I still remember the smell of, of the cook. I remember everything. And it's so dark to go back in that place and to write about it. So it took me a long time, literally three years ago, I started talking about it. And I'll tell you this, that not about the sexual abuse, but the domestic violence part, the backlash, I did one post on my Instagram about being abused. Uh, physically from the age of 16 to 24 and the backlash that I got on my Instagram it was unbelievable I had to turn my comments off and sadly it's really sad many of the the comments were from women that were that idolize this individual and um it's really it really breaks my heart to see women um you know not uplifting other women and not supporting other women and, and it's sad that fame and stardom and power and abuse of power can, can lead to so many atrocities. Look at what happened with, with Harvey Weinstein. Look what Jeffrey Epstein got away with for years and years. So um, it, it's been really tough. It's been really, really, it's very hard to speak up and one has to be ready to, to receive the backlash and to receive the negative comments and not only only negative, they were very hateful. They they deemed me to do this for a publicity stunt. I mean, if I've had enough publicity to last a lifetime just because of uh, dating Salman, um, so I it's you know I have no interest in publicity. Um, I'm I, by the grace of God, no more tears has been has received awards from President Barack Obama, from President George Bush. I was L'Oreal Woman of Worth 2013. I've had the American Heritage Award given to me. I am very blessed. I've worked very hard in my, in my career. I've, I've drowned myself in education for years to get to where I am today. So I'm not looking for any publicity, but I am looking to share my truth and I am looking to be the voice for many women who are out there that have been through or are going through what I endured. And, and also children that are sexually and physically abused. I wanna be a voice for all of these people who are going through horrible, horrible, abusive incidents and situations. Um, so me, I, I know it, it, it's, it's not might be the best question to ask, but uh, the work which you are doing, it, it's, it's, it's applaudable. Do you even got support from back India from your colleagues and peers who all you have worked with? Did you even decide to collaborate with them? Because as you said that we do have that kind of celeb power. And if we have a certain celeb place also associated with the kind of noble work you're doing, it also helps bring more traction to it. Sometimes even in way better good manner than we have thought. Have you thought of collaborating with someone or have you ever uh, stretched out that idea to anyone? Um, I, so so I'm, the constants, let me tell you the constants who are in my life since I left India. So there are very few. Uh, the one is Zenith. I've been friends with Zenith for years, Zenith Tham Aman, because I used to live on Mount Mary in, uh, in a building called Vindya Chal. And Zenith and uh, Masar Bhai used to live opposite me, and Jackie and his wife used to live opposite me. So um, I've known Zenith since I was 16. Um, but she's been a constant. And um, I, you know, I look up to her. She's someone who, who uh, gave a voice to women. She was, she had the audacity to be a, a rebel. She had the audacity to be bold in not only in her attire, but it being vocal. Um, 
and you know so i i have there i hold her on a on a pedestal i have the utmost amount of respect for her um but collaborating with uh sunil let me thank sunil sunil uh, has spoken wonderful things about no more tears but i haven't thought of collaboration with with india because i i think that um since celebrities their livelihood is fine fine they, they need money that's their livelihood um my only fear in in asking them to collaborate is that they will probably ask for some sort of compensation which no more tears 100 of our fi funding goes directly towards the victim services programs so um that's the, the only thought process i keep thinking that okay if i reach out to let's say you know i don't know who's uh, amir someone like amir khan right who does i used to love his show satyam vijayate i believe it i used to love that show he's such a, he's perhaps after after zina uh, or uh, yeah after zina he's one of the most intellectual individuals in bollywood um and i have the utmost respect for the films that he makes because he's very selective and his films have substance outside of amir i uh, give kudos to kudos to dipika because she spoke up on depression and that was very difficult because there's such a stigma attached to mental ailments um and then priyanka who i mean not only is she stunning and gorgeous and talented but the work she's doing for women and with unicef i commend her so my, if you ask me uh who my idols are they're not celebrities but they are celebrities who are using their platform and their voice to do good and to make the world better those are the people i look up to malala yousafzai in pakistan the one who got shot in the head look what she's doing for girls so um coming back to your question i go all, i went all over the place but coming back to your question um my only fear of collaboration is we're not going to be able to compensate them that's the problem so me does it happen that uh, when you talk about no more tears uh, or the work it does and as i have uh, started the interview with that you, you have been a celebrity and it will stay with you forever does it come in the way that there are other instances where people don't take you or your work also seriously just for the sake that you yourself are a celeb voice who's coming ahead because we have seen it in the past people just think that celebrities are doing just for the sake of it and as you have been discussing for promotion and stuff did you also have to face certain kind of backlash when you come out with a, a story which needs to be told and you know someone who needs help and putting out voice were there been challenges or are you still facing the same challenges not in america honestly not in america because we work with um the victims that we work with are brought here from every country in the world and then we also work with americans so a lot of the the victims don't know who i am they don't know my background they're not googling somi ali because i'm a victim advocate for them i'm someone who's literally rescuing them i work with the cops and the fbi directly we go in we rescue them get them out of the the abusive situation and then we have certain you know steps to follow in order to better their lives um but uh first of all i i never thought of myself as a celebrity um again i i apologize to all my producers and directors i never thought of myself as a, a huge star or a celebrity i'm still in shock how i did what i did and acted with gobinda and all these people it's just remarkable um but so i you know when you don't think of yourself as a celebrity i, I totally don't um but again to reiterate the people that i work with here don't know somi ali they know somi ali the founder and president of no more tears who rescues victims of abuse so it's a different dynamic when it comes to the united states that's lovely so we have you been in touch with on and on a lighter note have you been touching with how bollywood has been are there any films you have been watching or is there anything at all which has kept you i would say a little thread in the from the past you have held on to is there anything in bollywood you're keeping on track with so honestly from 1999 to 2006 i watched nothing all i did was study because remember i had to catch up from 9th grade to bachelor's degree to master's degree and then i went to new york to obtain a degree in filmmaking so uh i just studied and then when no more tears was born in 2007 all i did was no more tears now however i do get texts from a couple of people in in bombay 
that will say, this is a Somi movie. And they know what a Somi movie is. So a Somi movie is The Lunchbox. So, uh, Somi movie is Tupper. Um, Topsy is phenomenal. I love the ending of Tupper because I don't think 10 years ago we would have seen such an ending. Um, what else did I see? Pink, that's a Somi movie. So I, I like movies like that. I've always liked movies, even, you know, like art. I love that film. You're probably too young to remember what uh, art is. Uh, no, I'm aware very much, Shivana has been talking right, about yeah. that time, yeah. Yeah, so, so and Mandi and Bazaar, and those are the films that my mom used to watch as well. But in Pakistan, we grew up on, on Zenith and Parveen and Amitabh Bachchan, because those were all my mom's times. My mom used to have a crush on Rajesh Khanna. I, when I was 10, I wanted to marry Rajesh Khanna. I still have a crush on Rajesh Khanna. And my mom was like, you've lost your mind. So from Rajesh Khanna, I went up the, the, the social ladder at 16. I wanted to marry Salman. So. <laughs> now in my 40s, I want to marry Rami Malik, who's from Mr. Robot. <laughs> I so me, that's my new crush. I was coming to that. So me, you just mentioned that you started filmmaking. If not in front of the camera, behind the camera, do you want to come and tell a story? Is there a story you want to tell? So I did a, I did a short film, which aired at then Senator Hillary Clinton's benefit. It was a film called I Can Survive. It was a film about a gang rape victim in Pakistan. Her name is Mukhtar and Mai. And what happened is she was in a rural area in Pakistan and her younger brother was audacious enough to walk with a girl, just walk with a girl from a higher caste. And you know, we have caste systems even today in 2021. So in order to punish the, the, the younger brother, they gang raped Mukhtar and Mai, and they had her walk naked from where she was raped to her uh, hut, to her village, uh, to her home. And um, so, so this organization before, this was before No More Tears, this is when I was still working on my master's, my, my film degree. Um, in order to, uh, so what I did is I volunteered for this nonprofit and I did a short film covering Mukhtar and Mai's life. And that short film aired at Hillary Clinton's benefit. So it, it was called I Can Survive. And then um, what I, again, what I wanna do is I wanna do, I wanna make films on child marriages. I wanna do films on acid burning, uh, domestic violence, human trafficking, children that are sexually and physically abused. If you think about it, what is the one film that you can think of that Hindi cinema addressed child sexual abuse. Only one, it's Monsoon Wedding, if you recall. They, they touched on it, Nasir was in the film, and they touched on that subject. Um, but why, why do we not, in 2021, why are we not talking about domestic violence? Why are we still victim blaming? Why aren't we having public service announcements like Shabana back in the day when AIDS was on the rise? She did public service announcements on AIDS and she would explain to people in the commercials that Kisi ko chune se AIDS nahi hota hai. Exactly. Like, you know, she's always been so vocal and such an activist. Um, why don't, why are in 2021, why are we not having any of these commercials on domestic violence or, or trafficking or child sexual abuse? Why is still there a stigma attached to these issues? I don't understand. On a lighter note, Somi, if, if before we uh, uh, call it an end, tell me something. Have you, in recent past, have you been a... I am asking you, please don't mind if you don't want to answer the question because after going all your interviews and that one interview which went viral, everyone has been asking, so I'm asking you also. Have you watched any of the recent film of Salman? Have you been in touch with him off late for that matter? So complete. Uh, I have no, no qualms in talking about this. I haven't spoken to Salman in five years. Um, I would not be interested in watching any of Salman's films, not for any other, not for any animosity or any, I don't hate anyone. I wish everyone the best. Um, but I just, I, I prefer the more lunchbox, the more Manoj Bajpai, the more Om Puri Ji, the more um, Shabana Azmi style. I prefer those films and not to undermine Salman's films. He did do a film about, I forget the name of it, but it was a girl that get, ends up in, from Pakistan, ends up in India. Bajrangi Bhaijan. It was a beautiful that, subject. That I thought was a beautiful film. And um, 
but I have no interest in speaking with him. I think it's best to move on and we have moved on. And he's had 19 girlfriends since I broke up with him in, in December of 1999. Uh, so I've had a couple of relationships myself. Um, so I've moved on, we both moved on, but again, I wish him all the best. I will commend him on being, being human, his foundation. I will commend him on the work that he's doing. Um, I saw Salmanti two years ago. She was visiting Miami and I got to see her and spend time with her. She is to date one of the most nicest people I've ever met in my life. Um, she treated me like her own daughter in her house and I lived in their home. I ate their food and uh, I will always have respect for Salim uncle and Salmanti because they treated me with the utmost love and, and kindness and they treated me like their own, their own child. Um, so, but Salman, he filled me in on what Salman's doing with his foundation and I commend him and I wish him all the best. And, um, I always say he's, he was, uh, he was, he's a, he's a good actor, very bad boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that one. <laughs> all right. But to me, uh, with all said, uh, things said and done, uh, do you think that uh, is there something you're looking forward to with you now finally being in line as I have said that out of nowhere just one interview literally got you under the arc lights Wh what is one thing which you would like to convey to the people who might be watching this interview of yours next or any interviews of yours for that matter what is that one thing which Sumi really wants to put it across to the audience to maybe the fans which are bygones and to anyone and everyone who's talking about it well, there are a couple of things I'd like to say that if a 16 year old, naive, gullible, ridiculous girl from in from Florida decides to travel all the way to India to marry someone and actually starts dating that individual, then breaks up with him uh, and leaves him and and her preposterous dream comes into comes to life and turns into a reality. Um, anything is possible. That's one. Second thing is never give up. Never ever give up on your dreams. And the third thing, which is I'm learning because I've started speaking up. Don't be afraid. Don't let these uh, trollers, these people that, that make you feel small and, and because they have nothing else going on in their lives and they hide, hide behind their devices and they hide behind their laptops because they're cowards. Don't let these people bring you down. You speak your truth. You share your truth. Don't be afraid to do that. Because another thing, women, please, I urge every woman, stop being jealous of one another, uplift each other, whether in the, you're in the film industry, whether you're in the, the medical industry, wherever you are in the journalism in this field, wherever, uplift and support one another. It takes two seconds to repost someone's post. If someone looks beautiful, repost it, give them a compliment. Stop putting each other down, stick together as women, empower, let's empower each other, let's work together. That's, that, those are my messages. Thank you, Sumi. I, I, I don't have words how to end this interview. You, you have just, I don't know, you have spoken to me with so much heart and so many, I would say, home truths for maybe so many viewers out there who must be hearing this. Thank you for being well, a voice. I, 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 the, the best thing is I'm not looking for a role in Bollywood, so who gives a shit? I can say whatever the hell I want. I, can, I have no filter. I, I don't have to worry about starting a career in the film industry. So I don't care. I'm, I, I, can, I can talk with my heart. Finally, I can speak freely. But irrespective of that, Sumi, it's not about a Bollywood or a Hollywood role for that matter. To to survive something, maybe, I, I don't even know how to even say all those words and how to even put it in emotions, but to survive what you have survived and to sit here and to not just talk about it and tell the world, but to also help other people. Normally, people just come out of the experiences and they try and move on, but not only you have moved on, you're helping others to move on. I'll just say thank you. Thank you for the good work and thank you for the voice you uh, thank you so much for this one. It's purely selfish. It makes me feel good. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Somi. Wishing you all the best. And I hope that whenever the visa application gets through, we get to see you in Bombay, maybe super soon. 
Modi ji, please, would you serve Rajasthan, Anna? <laughs> it's my favorite place in the world. Acha nahi, jhoot bol rahi ho. Rajasthan nahi. Shiv Sagar bhi jana hai, pav bhaji khane. Phir Elko Mar Elko Art Market hai abhi tak? Ha ha, Elko bhi bhi hai. Elko is still there. Ha, to pani puri bhi khani hai, to uske liye bhi visa de di je, please. Chaliye, hum hope karte hain, inshallah, aapko bhot jaldi visa mila hai. And we wish you see you soon and all the best, Somi, for the good work. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's the best. That's all I can say. Thank you for highlighting such important issues. Thank you so much. And please follow No More Tears at No More Tears USA. <laughs> yes, I, I, you will see me as the next follower. You have my word on that. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye bye. Bye.